The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. There is something so bizarrely anticlimactic from just coming in from the back of the state. From the side, we get to like run on and we're like, ha And we walk in from the back, it's like, oh, hey guys, you're here. Oh, what are you all doing? How did you get in here? Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome okay. to my brother, my brother, main advice show for the Majin era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30 media luminary Griffin McElroy. Uh, just FYI, Paul really tried to convince us to let people sit behind us. We can all agree that would be bad for them, right? Because already this is a pretty bland, like, yeah. visual experience. Oh, the, the, the worst show I've ever seen. Um, I once stared at the back of three guys' heads for an hour. Uh, well, if the chairs, if we were sitting on stools and could give them a bit of a fanny show, what am I saying? Take them to the, to the McElroy Fanny Zoo. That is what we call it. So here's the thing. I don't know how many of you picked up during Sawbones. Thank you, Sawbones, by the way. Oh. We should also say we were told to read this. I think it's less exciting. Ahem. Recorded live in Verizon Hall on the Kimmel Center Cultural Campus. Woo! <laughs> um, so anyways, back to the bit. We're gonna edit that in at the beginning. So, uh, if you didn't pick up from Subbones, our, 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 our man Justin here is a little bit ill. Recovering from Recovering. illness, I am at the height of my powers. <laughs> and so part of that is his, his voice. He's very scratchy. He's been drinking tea uh, to try no, to protect. It's not his... hot enough, by the way, Paul. Good try, though. We gave him. Um, we gave him a words budget backstage, which is to say, we have so much show to do this week. Uh, four shows, which for us is a lot. And so, any bullshit you talk about backstage, you are spending precious amounts of your budget. And what did Justin open up with as soon as we got here to the venue? Well, I'm glad you asked. If he seems to taper off towards the end of the show or becomes completely inaudible because his voice has completely given up the ghost, rest assured it was worth it because he talked to us about Gallagher for like 15, 20 minutes. Like, to the point where, no joke, he said, we should open about Gallagher. And I said, oh, is Gallagher from Philadelphia? And he said, no, I've just been thinking a lot about Gallagher lately. I could add some really great color here, but I won't. We're okay, already words budget. Enough. You know what, Justin? I will give you the next three minutes to tell us why you. This won't count to your towards your words budget. Three minutes is so much money it's, that they paid. Do you for. realize the screeching halt this show would come to if I got three uninterrupted Gallagher minutes? Oh, I didn't say uninterrupted. <laughs> did you know? <laughs> did you know that Gallagher? You knew about Gallagher too, right? Like his, his, he let his brother go play small clubs as Gallagher too. You know how sometimes a human is a seagull to another human? Well, that was Gallagher too, his brother. And I used to think it was a cash in, but today I learned that Gallagher sent his brother Gallagher too to go perform in small clubs so Carrot Top couldn't get booked there. <laughs> this is true. Which, which is also why we started My Brother, My Brother, Me Too, so John and Hank Green couldn't do their yeah. show. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other thing that I wanted to tell you about Gallagher <laughs> is that there was a woman that got injured at a Gallagher show by... Well, Laughing too hard. <laughs> 
you probably can guess when she got hit by some melon or some shit. And um, they... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Stop. Apparently what happened at this one was in this court case, fucking Gallagher... <laughs> Gallagher was so funny <laughs> at the court case <laughs> that he won it because he... <laughs> So many jokes that the judge found in favor of Gallagher because he's so fucking funny. <laughs> and the judge has a quote where it's like, it's the most I've ever laughed in my life. <laughs> it's a sad life, but okay. As, as an injured woman sits in the plaintiff box, like, I clearly got hit by some melon. Yeah, some watermelon husks sticking out of her brain still. <laughs> Just fucking crying. Right. There are know? tears in his eyes as he talks about Gallagher. The other big Gallagher injury I wanted to share with you, the other woman that sued Gallagher got hurt because <laughs> she rushed the stage and slipped on melon leavings. <laughs> ma'am? Ma'am, are you okay? Did this go how you thought it would? That's why he does it. That's why he creates a protective field of, of fruit caltrops to slip up his, his potential assailant. It does make you think he definitely didn't stop doing Sledgematic after either one of those occurrences. And there must have been times when like, his manager or lawyer or whoever had to say to him, like, hey, you need to make an announcement. <laughs> you need to make an announcement before you do it so we're not liable. And he had to say, like, that will throw off the rhythm. Yes. Do you know? That would kill the bit. Do you know that... Um, we're nearing four minutes now. Do you know... Do you know Gallagher appeared on The Tonight Show a bunch of times, but only when Johnny Carson was on break? Because Johnny Carson hated him so much that he would only appear... He could only get on when they had a guest host. Because Carson hated Gallagher's guts so bad. <laughs> One other thing about Gallagher <laughs> is that his last show, that was his last special, I'm just gonna say for now, let's, we all can hold out hope. It came out in 2001, it's called Sledgematic.com. Whoa! <laughs> I was taking a drink. I was time, time specifically to that. Did I say it was in 2001? <laughs> That's so long after the internet came out, <laughs> Gallagher. We're not doing those jokes anymore about dot coms and what have you. Anyway, Gallagher is not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Except in the sense that he very much is. In the, in the sense... In second person. Yeah. In second person Gallagher. Gallagher is funny in retrospect. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so because of Justin's illness... <laughs> Uh, I have opted to that read the questions. fucking Gallagher fever. I have, <laughs> I have opted to read the questions this evening. And this is an advice show over the modern era. Excuse me, modern era, where we take your questions and alchemy like turn them into wisdom? Turn them alchemy like into wisdom. Fuck. Oh. We've only done this show 483 times. By the way, I am so sorry it took us so long to come to Philadelphia. It's wild. <laughs> so sorry. Honest to God, I thought we'd been here. Yeah. All Honest day, I kept asking people, like, we've done Philadelphia, right? We've been, we've been, and I, it took, a, I'm still not convinced we haven't been here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so our first question, riddle me peace, boy. This is an abuse of power. This is like, this is like, don't worry, I'll cover your shift as an EMT, but first, I'm taking this injured person to Taco Bell. <laughs> that is a great metaphor so for good. what is happening here. Um, so we got a bunch of Riddle Me Piss submissions because you all are incredible. Broken people. Uh, Hunter, are you here? There's probably okay. more than... Okay. Well, but Hunter, who submitted <laughs> numerous ones, and my favorite thing, Hunter, and this is why Hunter is a true American hero. <laughs> Hunter submitted screenshots of multiple riddles that riddles.com has since deleted. <laughs> because riddles.com, mind you, said, nah, the no, no, no. <laughs> two, 
too puzzling. So we would not have this riddle if it weren't for, weren't for Hunter's bravery. <laughs> Waiting outside the riddles.com window for them to turn on the fresh riddles light. <laughs> you were in there doing the work, Hunter, and I appreciate it. I <laughs> am. And also I should note, there's no punctuation in this. So I'm probably going to have to read it multiple times oh, in multiple shit. different deliveries. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse. <laughs> uh, I, I am here, but yet am not standing in your doorway. I am always here for you. What am I? <laughs> now let me try it a different way. I am here, but yet am not standing in your doorway. I am always here for you. What am I? I am here, but yet I am not standing in your doorway. Right. I am always here for you. What am I? I want to make it clear. <laughs> My strategy for this segment has always been to answer the riddle correctly. Yes. And my path to getting there has changed dramatically in the same way that I feel like I have my finger on the Yahoo pulse and that I know how that collective hive mind operates, I feel like I'm getting better at understanding how riddles.com submissions work. And it is with that, through that lens I want you to view my answer, which is Jesus Christ. Along those lines, I've been working really hard to try to like nail down what makes a good riddle me piss. Yeah. And it is sincerity and also complete obfuscation. Like it has to be like someone, ri it has to be like if you took two numbers and added them together, what would it be? Answer, yellow. It has to be like I really tried to make a riddle and there is no way a human being can answer. Right. So Justin, with that in mind, would you like to hear the riddle once more? No, please, Justin, no, just no, say no. something. I can't, I, the answer is a cool breeze. <laughs> okay. I am here, but yet I'm not standing in your doorway. I am always here for you. Obviously, it's your friend. <laughs> and I just want to harken back to the first line there. I am here for you, but yet I'm not. <laughs> Unless it is, I am here for you, but yet I'm not standing in your doorway. <laughs> Which even then, what if your friend is standing in your doorway? Wait a minute. Oh that's, shit, that's, now my riddle doesn't make sense. That sounds a lot like my shitty friend Garrett. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> hey, hey Garrett, could you help me move? I am here for you. Even though technically, <laughs> oh, what I am not. <laughs> so how about our first question? Oh, right. You don't know which app to open. Okay. okay. So, a little while ago, my dad's coworker drew a paper version of him. I assume you mean your dad. My dad's coworker drew a paper version of him. Some flat Stanley energy. My dad loved it so much, he had it cut out and laminated. And now he made it an Instagram. Okay, I wanna start first by saying, before you go any further, that drawing a picture of someone is not making a flat version of them. <laughs> That's how all pictures work. <laughs> I would also argue that you might need to reread Flat Stanley. <laughs> this is not what the book Flat Stanley was about. My, my dad's coworker 3D printed a fully articulated action, action guy. <laughs> my, my dad's coworker flattened him with a cork board. <laughs> okay, that is what happens in Flat Stanley. It's horrifying. Boys. How the hell do I make my flat dad popular on social media? The trip to Las Vegas didn't work. <laughs> and that's from Flat Father in Philadelphia. Are, Are you, you here? here? All right. Hey. Do you have... Are you holding? You're holding the flat dad. <laughs> Please do not fall off the balcony. Please do not die giving the flat dad to my brother. The flat dad is falling, he has been secured and retrieved. We have become viral marketing for the flat dad. Now let me see flat dad here. Okay. So I want to say, when you posited this question to me, I thought you were going to maybe show us the most lifelike no. thing I have ever seen. Hold and it. this is like if your dad was starring in a reboot of McGee and Me. 
All right, I just posted it on Insta if you want to see this bad boy close up. Uh, I haven't posted on Instagram in like six months, so this is a fun hey, way to wait, get back Hey, wait, hold on. Here. You gotta tag him. What's Flat Dad's Insta? <laughs> okay, this is actually not a bad way to get it to blow up. The Real Flat John. Okay. Everyone, go follow. We've never had a more actionable answer to a question ever. Holy shit, Everyone yeah. in this room, go follow at The Real Flat John. Okay, now or let's don't show Don't be fooled by fake Flat Johns. Bullshit. There are a lot of fake Johns out there. Worst Gun show I ever saw, I stared at the back of three guys' heads as they ran Instagram handles <laughs> for as an they hour. they screamed at a person sitting 30 feet away. The Real? The Real? Um, hey, we have no way of getting this back to you. <laughs> Unless we have a system of pulleys and we'll buckets. Out. Okay, so let's pretend like we didn't just summarily solve this in the best way we've ever done any question ever, so we can make jokes about it. Uh, first thing is I can think of a lot of ways to garner an Instagram following for a thick dad. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Is there any way to stuff this one with cotton in some way? Can we make this flat dad a little thicker? <laughs> <laughs> okay, not to get too... Okay, depth-wise, sure, it's a flat dad, but if we're talking about width, this dad has... This is a dad you can hold on to. Yeah, it's a thick dad. Very thick dad. This is a thick dad. Okay, this being able to see the dad paper has really taken the wing. Oh, I see him, yeah. Can we talk for a second about how beautiful that... eyes, kissable lips, strong Popeye esque forearms? <laughs> Forms are ridiculous. He looks like Mr. Hyde. I do like that also your dad's co worker put the hands in the pocket because hands are fucking tough to draw. <laughs> Um, I also... You can see he started to draw fingers. He was like, nope, nope, fuck this. <laughs> no, 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 what am I doing? These are going in the pants. Um, I also would like to point out, uh, if you are not holding this in your hands, like a lot of you aren't, um, it was drawn on the back of a calendar. Yes. Which, like, if I'm going to spend a little time drawing a thick dad, I usually will go get a blank sheet of paper to start on. <laughs> what that means to me is it started as a doodle, that the coworker was like, no, you know what? I'm gonna invest some time. I a have, bit more I have I'm gonna really here. nail this down. This is something. I, I just. <laughs> I also like there's a little water damage here. That's like the water damage happened, and my bet is your dad saw that and said, no, 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 I gotta get this guy laminated. <laughs> never, <laughs> never again. Yeah, before any more harm is done, I have to laminate this flat dad. <laughs> your dad loves this. <laughs> His, How his, hard was it for you to talk him into sending him with you? Dad, I promise I'll take good care of him. Oh, I don't know. His, his polo shirt collar is popped to a degree that makes it look like he's wearing, like, Dracula's cowl it or looks, something. It looks like a travel neck pillow. <laughs> can, we, can we talk for a second? Um, there is a very good chance, statistically speaking, that we would not read this question. Did you at any point worry about somebody seeing you holding a picture of your dad? <laughs> You're just kind of carting around. Hey, does he have a picture of his flat dad? Is that guy holding a cartoon cutout of his dad? <laughs> There's no other explanation. Um, well, I was about to say, <laughs> thank you for giving Griffin lots of giggles. If why, is else. That, why is that man holding a paper doll of a dude with a mouth that is basically a lips-filled hair donut? <laughs> And I like, listen, there's a lot of care in this doodle. There's stubble on it. There didn't need to be stubble. Damn, even if there was a way to get this back to you, I don't <laughs> think I would. Oh, no, no, you can't. The dad loves that more. He's my dad now. It does kind of look like our dad. My dad, my, this dad it would... kind of could be our dad. Um, I was about to say I hope that helps, but I'm fairly certain we did. Yeah, this one we fixed. Uh, we'll figure Whoa, out a way to get this back to you. Flat Dad's trending on Twitter. Oh, shit. Wait, Paul, are you... Return... Thank you, Paul. Return that dad. Hold on, wait. What's the game plan here, Paul? Uh, when this bit started, the real Flat Dad had 241 followers. He is up to 477. Yeah! Boom! Oh. But wait, oh my God. Oh, oh shit. Okay, now the question has changed. Because it, now it's, 
uh-oh, my dad's Instagram famous. Now what? In which I'd like to say, welcome to the jungle, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> next, next live show we do in Philadelphia, follow up and be like, I fucked up so bad. <laughs> My dad's Instagram face. Hey, how do I stat my powerful influencer dad? <laughs> uh, I have a Yahoo here. We're going uh, open- can... <laughs> We'll be opening for Flat Dad next time yeah. we come in. Into- <laughs> <laughs> uh, with special guest for Flat Dad. Uh, this one is sent in by Emma Kant. Thank you, Emma. It's Yahoo Answers user. Sorry, something's gone wrong. It's because I've lost access. To Yahoo? To the internet. Oh, okay. Not to Yahoo. They wouldn't cut me off like that. Then I was like, you're the only person who still uses it. <laughs> uh, it's asked by Flat Dad, who asks, <laughs> How can I help these freaking bees? <laughs> I, I put honey everywhere, but there are still no bees. I'm worried. Yeah. <laughs> what? That, okay, I'll say this. Not exactly a laughing matter, from what I understand, from Yo, some the, cursory the... learning about bees and their import to the world. Yes, but here's what I will say, Griffin, to that point. Yes. No one said that the bees are disappearing because no one's smearing honey everywhere. Like, we didn't, it's not like everyone up till now had been smearing honey on you everywhere, and then we stopped. Oh, no, the bees are disappearing. If I could posit this, though, can't hurt. <laughs> it could, though. Because making honey is what bees do, and if they see that there's already a bunch of honey, they might be like, job's done. Job's done. Guess I'll die. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, if they moved it to China, like, well, seems like literally they've got honey covered. Right. Then they might leave town to space. Maybe. Why would coating something in beaches make bees more likely to hang out there and spend time there? What you're saying is like, for me, for humans, it would be like me walking into a room and it's covered in jizz. <laughs> And I'm like, covered in jizz? I, it's covered in jizz, and I'm like, seems good. <laughs> I think what I'll do is I'll well, spend time here. I can't believe I'm about to do this, but devil's advocate. <laughs> if you had a primal bee brain, and you walked into a room that was as you so crudely put it, covered in jizz. And then you think- I, Just FYI, I don't like it when either one of my brothers says the word jizz. <laughs> We've had some thorough if testing I, in yeah, about 30 I, seconds. If, if I may, and I believe you'll enjoy this, coated in Beeman. Thank you. Yeah! <laughs> Wait, oh my God. They're lowering a Nobel Prize from the ceiling? Whoa! Whoa, Falcor just picked up Griffin and is flying in the streets of Philadelphia. The, the Liberty Bell has uncracked in his hole. It is filled with bee gifs. I wish there was a way to just take all the honey on all the store shelves off until they have been replaced with Beeman labels. Okay, anyway. I have a bee brain. Um, I'm sorry. Is this, yeah, where was is this local bee man? Um, Griffin, you were about, it's an allergy you're thing. about to tell us why you'd love to be in a room full of jizz. If you want to continue. If I had a uh, bee brain. Yes. A bee brain. And I walk into a room coated in bee man, and then I think, I like to make bee man, and this is a room <laughs> but that, <laughs> where that is allowed to happen. So you're saying that you, Griffin McQuarrie, would walk into a room full of jizz and be like, ah, this is a safe place for making jizz. If I had a bee brain. <laughs> then you would feel comfortable making jizz where others have made jizz. Right. <laughs> hey, 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 y'all. This ain't my thing. <laughs> I have an adult, mature brain. 
If you had a bee brain, you're saying. If you had a bee brain, you would walk into a room full of bee jizz and be like, ah, this is a great place for me, a bee, hey, to make bee jizz. I would find an empty zone. <laughs> but what if that's the wrong place? <laughs> what if that spot is hey, the one wrong spot? <clears throat> Maybe it's all this fucking shame that's making all the bees go away. Uh... Hey, you know what? You're right. Bees, jizz wherever. That's the 2020 slogan. Every every Tuesday at TGI Fridays, <laughs> bees jizz wherever. <laughs> Try our new honey mustard. It's the only kind of mustard we've got. <laughs> you get it. Okay, our next did question. Did you forget that you read the I question? Did, you were yes. waiting for Justin to take I, us away from Bee Jizz Town. I looked at I him. I don't have that power anymore. <laughs> I know. You must guide us from Bee Jizz. <laughs> Yesterday, I got a massage, and towards the end, the massage therapist said, well, you've been quiet. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> I really like this next part of a sentence. I was just trying to relax. Yeah, 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 yeah. And not make awkward small talk while getting rubbed down. But what did she want from me? Should I have been making noises indicating I was enjoying her rubs? <laughs> and that's from Sarah in Philadelphia. Sarah, are you here? Sarah is legion, apparently. Holy shit. A lot of Sarah fans. Um, I, okay. I get, I get, uh, I get massages. I go to get massage. It doesn't have to be a bougie thing. My posture is fucking garbo. And I, I sit in front of a computer for a long time, so I like to go get a massage. It's a nice thing I do for myself. And I get a sore back. And I feel like I am an experienced massage recipient. And there really still is not a great way. There are certain parts, when you hit a knot on this topographical map I got going on back here, I want to be able to say that's that is the part where it's very sore. Please continue applying pressure there. And it's tough to think of a way to do that on the fly that isn't uncouth. Yes. <laughs> so I, I understand the need for silence. I'm usually fairly buttoned up also because the alternative is like, uh. <laughs> okay. Oh, idea. If that ever happens, and you go, oh, just keep going and go, oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Nothing just, is fixed. Just carry it through. You fix nothing. <laughs> uh, that's true. That actually would make it more awkward. I'm like, wait, are you uh, are Tim you Allen? Tim, Tim the Tool Man Sailor? Uh. <laughs> this is true because doing a high pitched version of that, I don't think is much better. There's, oh. I, really, I struggle. I, I genu- it is, uh, the last thing I want to do is apply stigma to massage therapy. It's an important and valuable service. No, I'm applying stigma to you, Griffin Magwar's yeah. body. Because I just can't think of, uh, like, even me going, like, right there is really good. That feels very bossy. Like, yeah. I know how to do my fucking job. It's or, like I don't go to Domino's and I'm like, yeah, make it a circle. What about, <laughs> what about this? Rub my, my shoulder, Griffin. Yes. No, God, no. no. Uh, you know, I, I realized that as I was saying it. Uh, what about, okay, try again. Try again. Do it. I felt like I was rubbing like a squishy, horny robot. Okay. No, Travis. <laughs> there needs to be a bell. Wait, that one they more give time. You. A Justin, light. you do this one. Okay. Bazinga. <laughs> <laughs> if you are the character Dr. Bazinga from Big Bang Theory, I think that's okay. You know that he character? He did it. Griffin? A bell, you say, like at Trader Joe's? No, here's the thing. That's a mistake. For a long time, I thought the bell at Trader Joe's was because it was like, I had great service. So one day, I had great service, and I rang it, and a manager came up and was like, do you guys need help? And they're like, that, you ring the bell for a manager. I was like, oh, and then I never went back. <laughs> you thought they were like... <laughs> <laughs> it, y'all understand it. That's I'm the... just saying, we live in fucking 2019. You're right. There's a better way to get a manager than an old-timey ship bell. But you also know, in that case, anytime anybody brung you up and they're like, ooh, soft pretzel bread, I love this. I don't know why they, ha- I know, it's good. 
Every time they're like, I love the soft pretzel bread. I know, you work here and I eat it all the time. I know it's good. But then they go, okay, we'll see you later. <laughs> see ya, have fun. Not gonna ring the bell. I love you. <laughs> Did Wait. I mention how much I like the soft pretzel bread? No, no collection of sounds that we have developed as a species appropriately conveys a sort of tasteful level of pleasure. <laughs> right. <laughs> In a massage, completely non-sexual setting, there's right. nothing that's appropriate. That's why we've established tips. <laughs> money does that. Yeah, After but the fact. you could also... If you hand somebody money while they're massaging you, <laughs> this is also a problem trap. <laughs> that was, yep. Oh, that's it. You found the knot. <laughs> Wait, maybe you need some, like meaningless slogans that you just say to indicate like, like if they, Trav, go ahead and rub my back. Okay, that's good. A little lower. Okay, and I'll just yell, oh, that's the mustard. And then, but then it's like, it's why did he say that's that? so, yeah, it's, it's so. Like, it's like, it couldn't be loaded with any meaning other than I'm enjoying the massage. That's right. true. Please continue. Because I know you don't literally mean I found mustard But if you do it, body. if you do it and I say, I'm enjoying the massage. <laughs> yeah, I've ruined it, right? I have to have code phrases. Yeah. But it, like, it is out of here. You like, need, <laughs> no, solved it. Brazilian steakhouse rules. Keep rubbing there. It's the green. Stop rubbing there. I flip it over. It's the red. Boom! Don't rub there anymore. Boom! We are solving them left and right tonight, folks. Solved it. Let's take a pat. (laughs) What are you looking at over there, Justin? Well, it's our new segment, Griffin. I invented it for you, Philadelphia. It's a new segment. I would like, uh, by the way, pause it. Silly Delphia. Why? Because they've been real silly and Un- fun. Unposit that. <laughs> I'll reposit it later. <laughs> no, please. Okay. Uh, Paul is gone. If anybody hears from Paul, I love some more tea with booze in it. <laughs> he, he knows the recipe. This is the new segment. It's one that I made up. So pour yourself a cup of minion quotes and drink the cup right up. <laughs> So this is a new segment called Minion Quotes. For the past few weeks, I've been subscribed to this page called Minion Quotes on Facebook. Just, well, is it just a lot of like, banana? No, my friend, it's not. Um, I'm gonna give you, so this is the game with Minion Quotes, and I hope you're all gonna enjoy this. What it is, is it's a quote of sort of, it's a page full of platitudes with sort of incongruous images attached to them. And the game of minion quotes is, I'm gonna tell you the platitude, you're gonna tell me the cartoon character that's been attached to it, and if you get it right, I have to share it on my Facebook page (laughs) without any comment whatsoever. I'm gonna give you an easy one that does not count. Would you go for a ride with Sam Elliott? What? Yes. Would you, Would go, you for go for a ride with Sam Elliott? So when you said platitudes, what you meant is in sometimes just sentences. Just garbage. This is an easy one. I just wanted to mention. Yosemite it's, Sam. No, it's a picture of Sam Elliott on a, a motorcycle. But I did want to mention that in real small letters on here, it says, I am a woman. Hear me roar. <laughs> okay. Don't know why. Today... I am wearing a lovely shade of I slept like crap, so don't piss me off. <laughs> now, boys, yeah. what, what cartoon character is on this image? Ooh. Uh, Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy, interesting. Elmer Fudd. Nope, that one's the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> That's Taz. That one's Taz. You ever want to just grab someone and say, WTF is wrong with you? W... WTF is wrong with you. (laughs) I'm going to say Tweety Bird. (laughs) Interesting. Can I say Taz the Tasmanian Devil again? (laughs) Duncan! Fuck! That one's Duncan! I thought I had it. 
To my family and friends nearby and far away, I want you to know that no matter what is going on, I always love you. <laughs> wow. Wow. I will help you with this. This is, the, this is how much I'm going to help you. It is a mascot. Oh, okay. Chester you. Cheetah. Interesting. Ronald McDonald. <laughs> what are you all saying? Brittany? Brinley? <laughs> Gr- gritty. What? They're saying gritty. It's Mickey Mouse. It's Mickey Mouse. Why would it be anything other than Mickey Mouse? Don't bring your... No, hey, listen, on. Philadelphia no, no. only knows one Don't moment. you bring your local perversions. <laughs> okay, okay, this okay, is a okay. Clean show. Okay. This is how... I'm going to get fucking cocky right now, okay? This one's a dog. A dog? <laughs> I'm going to narrow it down for you that much. It's a dog. Okay. Can't decide if I need a hug, an XL coffee, six shots of vodka, or two weeks of sleep. Okay. I got it. Two of those are cool. You go. <coughs> Odie. I am going to say droopy dog. Fuck. <laughs> You cocky motherfucker! I got you! Yes! Just Cheryl, press I'll it. let you press it. Share now public. You can also write post. I love this. <laughs> uh, oh, no, wait. Undo it so I can just write me. This is period. me. This is me AF. <laughs> all right. That is, that is our new segment, Mini Quotes. While you all play barista over there, I will read the next Yahoo. Uh, this one was sent in by the prospector, Merritt Palmer. Uh, Again, I cannot get it to load. This is asked by Yahoo Answers user Paul. Paul, who asks, Justin, are you paying attention? Yeah, bud. (laughs) How long did this steep? Five minutes, perfect. Thank you. Hey, Paul, can I get a T2? No. Fucking... Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you get one too. Wait, what what just happened? <laughs> a T2. I'm, I'm all done, thank you. Dun, 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 okay, dun, dun. everybody here thought you were doing a munch squad. No. Terminator. Did anybody two. else here think he was about to do a munch squad? Oh. No, we were doing a Terminator 2. Terminator band. 2. Dun, 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 dun. No, that's it. The munch how, how does munch squad go? Yes, demonstrate the difference. That one munch squad's like. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I you're can hear it now. Yeah, yeah. I can hear it now that. in your head. I'm sorry. No. You now you can to... understand my confusion of, hey, this is the worst Munch Squad segue ever. <laughs> this is sent in by the prospect of Mayor Palmer. It's asked by Yahoo Answers user Paul, who asks, Hot Pockets for Plants? Like this, should be a, this should be a fucking minion quote. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> this first sentence. I can see this first sentence being said by, like, Kermit the Frog or something like that. I love Hot Pockets, and I love my plants. <laughs> I want them to... Deal with it, Uncle deal Sam. With, yeah. I want them to experience the same culinary enjoyment I get when eating a Hot Pocket. Is there a four-plant Hot Pocket equivalent? If it helps, I have a mini cactus and a succulent. Yes, that helps. Of course it helps. Yes, it helps. Of course if it you helps. had said like a Venus flydrop, that's obvious. The answer is hot pockets. Right. right. <laughs> I don't know what a hot pocket for orchid hey, would be. Did everybody be. just imagine what it would look like to see a Venus flytrap just like try to swallow off? <laughs> very good. If you haven't imagined it yet, it's very good. Yeah, we can rule out small hot pocket. Okay. What do plants like? I've never really been 100% sure. Being They dirt. like not being dead. <laughs> yes. Uh, sunlight, nutrients, photosynthesis, 
bugs to have sex on them sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> sunlight. Did I say sunlight? You've also just made me think back to bees, just for a second, okay. back to bee jizz. Imagine if humans could only jizz if they went and got something from somewhere else and then came back like, okay, thank God, now I can jizz. Kinda. <laughs> Do we need to have a talk backstage about sunlight? Sunlight. Uh-huh. Water. Dirt. Yeah, dirt. Dirt. That's it. Now we're talking plants, baby. But none of those are necessarily easy to hot pocketify. Yes. Yeah. You could have light, like go through ice. No, that's not a hot pocket. <laughs> It, hot buckets aren't sausage through bread. <laughs> I mean, it's metaphorical. You're going to have to be a little <laughs> more abstract, I guess, Trav. Um, so you want to take some sunshine and wrap it around some water. I mean, like literally. Like fucking the candy man. <laughs> okay, hold on. What is a hot pocket? You know, a hot, hot pocket is two things that human beings need. Filling and bread. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you hot need, and pocket. Hot. Yes. Yeah. So it's got filling and bread is two things that humans need to live. So for plants, it just needs to be two things that they need to live, right? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Here's what I'm saying. You get a big chunk of ice. And then Pla- you glomp a bunch of dirt around it. And then you throw it away because yes. that doesn't, that's nothing. That, no, nothing. No, 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 a big chunk of ice, glomp a bunch of dirt around it, put the plant into, a naked plant into that, make, on top make of Make that it. plant tough. <laughs> no. Raise you a Stallone plant. I was saying, I think that would work. If you have a big Wait, chunk of ice you think around, it would work? How? <laughs> now, hold on, hold on. It's important. No, listen, Justin, I'm with you. Let me back you up. Okay. When you do this wild thing, you give them ice surrounded by dirt, you sit them down, and then you eat a Hot Pocket in front of them so they understand how to okay. do it. That was the piece I was missing. The that, I, yeah, we had plenty of the nature, I need a little bit of the nurture, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was always gonna be the roots. That was what we missed for all those years. Plants don't have mouths, I'm sorry. Oh shit! The only way they can ingest Except plant- a Venus flytrap. Oh uh, yeah, mm-hmm. thank you. The only way they can ingest a plant hot pocket is with a big is with their roots, right? So you have a big clump of ice and you cover it in dirt. Right. And then you put the plant in that dirt. And I think you got a plant, baby. I mean, I think that you're like, and it's in sun, obviously. We, the sun's not part of it. Can you we have to get Can we at least put some Italian seasoning somewhere? Yeah. Or maybe There's nothing to say that we can't put some <laughs> pepperoni in the ice. You can do, you can do fertilizer. It's like the Italian seasoning of plant. Food. Yes, but now we're just saying like give the plant what it needs, but not what it craves, <laughs> not what it deserves. <laughs> yeah. What do plants eat for fun? Yeah, right. right. We're, yes, thank you, Justin. We're so focused on what. The, listen, we could have bread and water, but man does not live by bread and water alone, right? We need It's not what that means, but go on. <laughs> they need cheese and Italian seasoning yeah. in there. <laughs> so I say, what's the thing that a, a tender, plant's a like? A tender, crusty, flaky, funky crust. Right. So what about just dirt in a hot pocket? <laughs> I'm saying the dirt, dirt pocket, I'm saying dirt pocket is is good. It's then easier. You plant, you plant the plant in the hot pocket itself. Mine no. is easier than watering because the water's in there already. You just have to wait for it to melt. Sorry, I didn't clarify. The crust is very moist. (laughs) Oh. Okay. This has gotten gross. So I'm going to take a step back and say, how do we encase light? Can we just give a glow stick to a Hot Pocket? (laughs) What does a Hot Pocket want? How come we have... We're so worried about what we get out of this. What does a Hot Pocket... No, Griffin, I agree with you. Griffin has decided to talk about how we give... A hot pocket to a hot pocket. How do we give a hot pocket one last experience on Earth <laughs> before fair? it is consumed? No, How do we right. make it worth it for the hot pocket? Right. Right. Here's what I'm is it fair that a hot pocket should never get to eat a hot pocket? No, that is cruel. It's cruel. We need to give the hot pocket the hot pocket experience so it understands why it must be consumed by us. <laughs> <laughs> it's only fair. Two hot pockets come in a box for a reason. Yeah. Yes. <laughs>
Hey everybody, this is Griffin McElroy. Thanks for listening to uh, Mabim Bam. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, we usually don't put up two live episodes in a row, uh, but we all are are sick, and we all were super sick last week and just could not get a, a good recording time where one of us wasn't, you know, floating on that quill or, uh, you know, had a voice that sounded like we've been eating, um, you know, sand burgers uh, or whatever. And so this is a live episode that we did in Philadelphia. Quick programming note, we lost about 20 minutes of our audio. Uh, and so we had to cut some stuff out of the middle of the show. And when we come back from the ad uh, for like 15 seconds or so, it sounds kind of weird, but then we write the ship and, well, Paul righted the ship. So just want to give you a heads up. And also I want to give you a heads up about Dylan Miskowitz um, because Dylan Miskowitz is the COO of Cafe Altura. And there was this time where Dylan was having a rough time, rough time in, in Dylan's life, because Dylan needed a director of coffee for Cafe Altura and just w- looked everywhere, looked up, it looked all up and down the street, went into the big business building, looked around, asked around, nobody, no dice, looked in the couch cushions, could not find a director of coffee. coffee. So Dylan went to Zip Recruiter, posted his job and found the best person for the role in just a few days. How? Well, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. The recruiter's technology finds people with the right experience and invites them to apply for your job. It says, hey, I know a cool party, and it's happening at Cafe Altura, and it's being thrown by Dylan, and Dylan has everything you'd need at a party. Fucking bugles, juice, a job. And so the, the director of coffee came and was like, yep, here I am. And Dylan was so happy as four out of five employers are when they post on ZipRecruiter and get a quality candidate within the first day. So right now, try ZipRecruiter for free at our web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash mybrother. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash M-Y-B-R-O-T-H-E-R. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Quick uh, quick update. We are doing a Candle Night show this year. Yay, we're doing it in Huntington, as we always do it. Invite everybody to come to our hometown and enjoy uh, all of the hospitalities therein. I'm talking about Ridger Park. Uh, I'm talking about the movie theater downtown. I'm talking about, uh, I think there's still a Max and Irma's down there. You can see the sights, sounds, and smells of the My Brother, My Brother, Me TV show. Walk the Marshall Campus, I think. Maybe you're probably allowed to do. They'll probably be on winter break. But it, that may be trespassing, so check on that one. Uh, anyway, our show this year is a little bit different. We are doing it in Huntington, but we have a new venue. We're doing it at Keith Albee, which is uh, this big, beautiful theater uh, in, in downtown Huntington. We're so stoked to be doing it there. Uh, it is a much bigger venue than years past, so uh, the exciting thing is that it will probably not sell out in like 15 seconds, which is cool. Uh, this yeah, there, there are some things that are going to be different. First of all, it's going to be on uh, a Saturday. It's going to be on December 25th first uh and it's gonna be sort of a pseudo matinee it's the show is at 4 p.m uh we're, we're doing that so folks can get in and then get out and have time to spend in in huntington and you know not have to travel uh, late 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 at night so the show's gonna be at four we're gonna have some you know mcelroy openers probably get you out of there around seven or so to go hit up some some tasty food spots uh, and yeah, oh the, oh, the other thing at, uh, Keith Alby is it's general admission. Uh, so just keep that in mind whenever you're planning your travel to get in. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. Oh, right. Tickets. If you want to get tickets, they're going to go on sale this week, uh, Friday, November 8th at 12 PM Eastern time. We will have links, uh, where you can do that on our social media channels. You can also find them at McElroy.family. Uh, so yeah, that's Candle Lights. We hope you come out. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Uh, this year, also, all the proceeds are going to be uh, going to benefit uh, Harmony House, which is a, a great organization in Huntington that uh, helps to provide permanent housing and, and different sort of support services to homeless folks living in Huntington. So uh, we're really excited to be working with them this year and uh, just excited for the show. It's always such a fun holiday treat. And uh uh, yeah, hope to see y'all there. Again, tickets go on sale this Friday. Uh, or, I'm sorry, that's next Friday, November 8th. I fucked that up. It's next Friday, November 8th at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. So, uh, hope to see you there. Grab them ticks. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, enjoy the rest of the episode. Bye. 
this is Amy Mann. And I'm Ted Leo. And we have a podcast called The Art of Process. We've been lucky enough over the past year to talk to some of our friends and acquaintances from across the creative spectrum to find out how they actually work. And so I have to write material that makes sense and makes people laugh. I also have to think about what I'm saying to people. If I kick your ass, I'll make you famous. The fight to get LGBTQ representation in the show. Mm-hmm. We weirdly don't know as many musicians as you would expect. I really just became a political speechwriter by accident of realizing that I have accidentally uh, pulled my pants down. <laughs> Listen and subscribe at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcast. It's like if the guinea pig was complicit in helping the scientist. Hello. Hi. Who are you? My name is Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hi. Um, so my question is, I recently found out that my apartment has mice. And um, <laughs> I call... <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, we got in contact with my I landlord. Love, man, Philadelphia, you have a good time with anything, huh? You got mice, but how fun. <laughs> what a quirky fun time. I got in contact with my landlord and they called an exterminator and the exterminator put out like glue traps, which are really nasty and oh, inhumane. Yeah. And so I got rid of those and I bought some live traps on Amazon. Okay. And... The problem I'm is, a barbarian who doesn't know what that means. <laughs> so they're like mouse traps, and they keep the mouse alive, and then you let it go. Yeah. Okay. And to, the, to bother someone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, my strategy has been there's like a very, very large park near my apartment that like is not near anyone's house. Mm-hmm. So That's I can, good. The mouse will totally survive there. <laughs> they're definitely well suited for this. <laughs> as long as you set down hawk traps at the park, you should be. <laughs> And you move the hawks into your house. Oh, right? no. <laughs> when you... I, I want to hear this yes. question for sure. When you called the landlord to say, there are mice in here, what did you think was going to happen next as a result of that conversation? I don't know. A, a less gross one. Okay. Like, like, the, landlord, like the landlord <laughs> might say, let me talk to him. Let me t- <laughs> Can you put him on the phone? And then, you, then you hear... <laughs> Follow me, boys. <laughs> okay, so. So my question is, I, um, my strategy so far has been to carry the mousetrap, which is made of clear green plastic, down the street to the park. And how can I continue to do this and not have to kill mice with my bare hands? Uh, no, no one whoa, was saying that. Shit. No one urged that. At no point in this conversation did that come up. No, but if you if you use like snap traps, sometimes it doesn't kill them. That's not your bare hands, though. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, I'll stop so telling you. You I'm get so them sorry. on the glue trap. So, have, no, 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 no glue trap. I got rid of those. No, you have a magic box. Have a, ma- have a little a b- little plastic box. The mouse is clearly visible in the plastic box. Okay. And so I'm walking oh. down the street with a mouse in a box. Right. And how can I do this without becoming my neighborhood mouse lady? Right. Okay. Because we've all got one. Um, my advice would be, if you're trying to, like, hide it, right? If you're trying to be secret, everyone's going to be like, ooh, what's going on? Whereas if you just walk down the street with it, like, on your own, like, look at this! I've got a mouse in a box! Everyone's like, oh, yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> The problem is you need to make an example of this mouse. <laughs> when you're walking it to the park, just be like, other mouses, look at this idiot. <laughs> look at this dumb shit that I caught. You will be next. My house is not cool for you. You will be in the box. You will look like an idiot to your friends. Get a bunch of people in monastic dress to walk behind you in a line yelling shame. I'll get the job done. And maybe like a drummer to play like a dramatic, like, brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
I am now. When you carry a mouse with your hands, how do you... Griffin's leaving. Oh, he's telling Paul something. He's, They're going to bring out the mouse. He's afraid of mice. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a mouse for everyone. When you're holding a mouse in your hand, how do you not just die? <laughs> Can, I can't imagine anything worse than that, and you're just holding it. Oh, how do you do it? I have gloves on. Perfect. Wait, Thank you have gloves you. on and it's in an acrylic home? Um, it's like a, a cylinder. Why does it have to be see-through though? Like it's <laughs> a, I don't want to be so you know if you caught a mouse. What would be worse than taking an opaque container to the park and be like, go free? Oh shit, it was just adorable. It was my pretend mouse. I look like an asshole. I'm going home anyway. I'm sorry I gathered so many, many people to watch the dramatic release. <laughs> In hindsight, I should have done this in private. By the way, so Teresa bought this thing for our cat that's like, hey, keep your cat entertained. Feed them through, and it's little plastic fake mouse that you fill with food, and then you hide them so that the cat can find them and hunt, and so Travis can get the shit scared out of them. <laughs> right. The number of times I've stepped on these things and screamed, it's countless. Okay, I have a good answer. The first good answer hold the box out in front of you and sprint down the street yelling, get the fuck out of the way! <laughs> That's about the only normal sort of reaction to holding a mouse box I can think of. Does that help? Very much, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Rise. Rise, Lazarus. Approach the microphone. Come forth. Hello. Hey, hi, guys. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, how are you? Awesome, I'm really happy to be here. Amazing people. Ah. Oh, yeah. um, so I. Uh, who are um, you? Oh, I'm so sorry. My name is Stephanie. Hi, uh, Stephanie. So you have a there. question about yeah, scary so things. This is a really good one. Yeah. So I've actually been. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Yo, I love that. I'm Stephanie. This is my new fucking mixtape. Prepare. <laughs> no, I mean it's honestly something that's been happening for years, and honestly, my dad's been doing this um, honestly since I was little, and um, unfortunately, my. A uh, fiance has actually gotten like he pulled in uh, to the. You mix. have to tell us what it is because okay, it so, sounds so bad if you so, lead into it that okay. way. <laughs> okay. So Every night on Halloween, we play a game no, no. where one of us hides and has to <laughs> escape murder. It's okay. So this is any time of the year, honestly. So um, my dad will actually buy these huge masks. Um, he's actually bought like stage masks. He's into like theatrical things. He's also into those little like you know cheap ones like. Uh, like you can buy from CVS, like the giant, like you know, crying baby faces, if you've ever seen those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, my fiance, whom. When Stephanie like, got yeah. to, my dad likes to buy these huge. <laughs> stop. Yeah. Right there. Was your brain just like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Usually I'm pretty good at predictive thought, but I actually have no idea what the next word is going to be. It's oh, it's mass. It's, it's something Steph's dad has gotten the fiance into, yeah. and I'm terrified. Okay. okay Stephanie. So, so, yeah. Stephanie, lots um, of masks. So my fiance of nine years, which is crazy, um, he gets scared. <laughs> so good. Hey, no, no, hey no. Steph, We've been dating for reference. like you didn't have to lo- say that. that long. <laughs> it's good. No, it's we weren't like gonna look into anyway. it. Hey, Stephanie, guys, you were right. This question kicks ass. <laughs> My dad will just literally at any moment like possible, he will scare my fiance with these masks. He will be outside like um, unloading the car and my dad will come around the corner as a huge baby uh-huh. and he screams, he freaks out. He's here by the way. Um, Your dad? I actually wanted to mention that, no, 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 my fiance, sorry. Oh, thank God, hey. And I actually wanted to mention that he is also the like, you know, Danny Klein who has the Elton John songs that you sang a very long mm-hmm. time ago for yes. my, so he's uh, Hello. He's a, a yes, I see you waving. Anyway, uh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> but yeah, so um, and he's also uh, he recently got a um, like a wicked witch mask, and um, I just want to support him because right. I don't, I really can't stop my dad or like you know change who he is or right. his you know quirks. But how do I support my fiance in this interesting now, situation? Listen, um, <laughs> my dad's got quirks. <laughs> My dad stood in front of you all dressed in nonsense clothes. And it yeah. was fun. It was great. That was fun. That's a quirk. What my dad doesn't do is scare Teresa all the time. <laughs> that, that is something I, I would argue 
actionably a way to support your fiance is to say, hey, dad, cut that shit right the fuck yeah. out. I would like to say I appreciate that you made a joke about how long you've been engaged for nine years and then it's crazy, but then asked us about your dad scaring your fiance with masks because you know exactly the level of problem that we are equipped to help with. <laughs> You know exactly where our pay grade is and what we should be brought on board to sort of address. It's like if you showed us like a pro baseball team and we're like, well, we couldn't face them and said, oh, no, no, no. You're selling hot dogs in the stand. (laughs) And we're like, oh, thank God. Perfect, okay, good. Is the scares your dad is generating more of a slow burn hereditary style or are they more spooky jump out the box Scares. No, it's quite quick. He just okay. likes to come down the stairs, and he will be reading his phone, and just all, all of a sudden, he's right there, and he's like, ah! You know, he just yells, Can I just nine say- years, you're not ready? Sorry. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. I agree, right? Like, you I, have to be acclimated I, to this kind of thing. I just wish someone would do that for me. Huh. It just sounds like <laughs> a lot of fun, you know? It is- I think your dad must really like your fiancé. Uh, can I say this? To put that kind of energy into another human being, no matter what the, like, the, the verb is, to scare, to comfort, whatever, no. to put that kind of energy into the fiance, I think is so nice. Now, I think it's just a genuine level of caring about the fiance. I don't think Stephanie would be here if the question was, yeah, my dad won't stop comforting my fiance. <laughs> My dad, you, my dad buys these comfort masks at CVS. <laughs> it just makes my fiance feel so nice and happy all the time. You don't think my dad won't stop comforting my fiance is a my brother, my brother, and me level question. Okay, because I feel point. like there's an amount of time the comforting could continue. Now, Stephanie, you, I think I heard you say this. Does your dad also scare you? Yeah, but I'm honestly used to it. Like, That's you're right. To it, right? Yeah, Stephanie, you're horrible. But this is not like a thing that your dad only does to your fiance. Um, one of the few things. <laughs> oh no, I thought I knew where I was going with this. <laughs> um, okay. Stick with me. You're gonna have to break things off. But then, listen, no, listen, there's a turn. Listen, there's a turn. I promise there's a prestige. Hang with him. A week later, you're like, I want you to meet my new significant other, Krav Maga expert, <laughs> whoever, and they're going to do Krav Maga on your dad once. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, and a lot of us tend to idolize our parents and think of them as being very, very powerful and strong. Or Krav Maga proof. But if someone does Krav Maga, Krav Maga, <laughs> Krav if someone Krav does Maga? Krav Maga to your dad once, is there any danger of long-term dad breakage? <laughs> anyway, Probably, it's a yeah. risk we're going to have to take. You're obviously going to have to dump this Krav Maga loser and get back with the hero up there. And then I think your dad will then maybe be so confused from the brain damage he's received from your... <laughs> maybe that ha- maybe he gets Krav Maga and then, you're, uh, then Danny, uh, the first fiancé, comes in, beats up Krav Maga, dude. Yes. And then everyone's, and then the dad's like, now I'm scared of you. <laughs> right. And then maybe, and Danny, plug your ears for this one. I'll wait. Okay. And maybe you don't tell Danny about this plan so it fixes both problems because it lights a fire under. <laughs> does, that, does that help? Be honest. Yes, thank you very that much. That helps. Thank You're you welcome. Yeah. We had one more. Over here. Yes. Rise. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Rebecca, you had a question about a horse. I did. A horse transaction. Yes. Uh, my stepmom sold her horse, and I'm wondering if it's still chill for me to, like, go see the horse. <laughs> chill is a funny word to use there. Because that would imply that if you did this, the new owner would, without question, get it. Yeah. What I like about... Yeah. <laughs> if you have to ask... Would it be chill if? It's probably no, right? Because that's not what chill is. Chill is kind of like what we all kind of accept is fine. 
And you, there's obviously a little bit of room here in the, in the twilight between chill and not chill or horse visiting. I don't day. even know if it's legal. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, somebody else bought it, you know? It's kind of theirs now. It's like if, if I sold my car to someone and Griffin was like, oh, I love that car. Can I still go sit in it? Yeah, because a horse, a horse is an emotionless machine, you fucking animal. <laughs> Yeah, because a uh, yeah, because a uh, Pontiac Grand Am can love more than no. Any, I will say it can be free. I have real world experience with this. We adopted Lily, right? Um, and now, like a year and a half. That's later, That's Travis's horse. It's my <laughs> basically it is my fifty pound dog. Um, I still get texts from like the rescue group that will just randomly like one use the name that she does not go by anymore, which upsets me. I know she's Lily now, okay. but two they'll be like. How is she? <laughs> or worse, they'll say, could you send her a picture of us of her happy? And I'm like, with the newspaper in the background. Yeah, right. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Ha- okay. But then they also did invite me to a dog wedding, and so that kind of okay, brought the whole thing its, back around. There's trade-offs for everything. I have to ask, yeah. have you already done this? Is it too no, late? No. It's not too late. But it's in does it make a difference if it's like in a public place? Like the horse, the like- Like if the horse meets you halfway? <laughs> like if you meet the horse in Centralia, Pennsylvania? No, like it's the horse keep, like the horse's house, but it's like a, a bunch of horses live there. It's the horse's house? The horse, like, what is it called? Back like, up for a second. Horse the horse house? The paddock I'm is learning a, a lot, back up. It's the paddock horse. is in a park, so I could like go to the park and walk through the paddock and be like, hey. Oh, okay. So it's I don't know if you remember me, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's in a public... Okay, I think I understand the gist of the question a little bit more. It's not like you're like kicking in somebody's like garage door and like, what's up? That's mine. <laughs> don't keep a, a horse in a garage. This is a public... It, it's not the worst place to keep them. It, this is a paddock that you could ostensibly just be at, and it's just like, oh, this looks like a good horse. Here's some letters that I wrote you. <laughs> I haven't seen the film War Horse, <laughs> but is this kind of what happens in it? Like, I know you're not my horse anymore. You're a war horse You're the now. war's horse now. <laughs> <laughs> but we can still hang out, right? Hey, can I come see my horse, the army? No. <laughs> he belongs to war. <laughs> when, you, when, you, when there's another war, you can see him in the, the papers. <laughs> A newspaper about war. Gra- Grandpa's medicine? Is that you? I didn't recognize you since all your legs are guns now. Let's get you out of here. Bang, 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 bang. bang. Get back in your pen, Grandpa's medicine. <laughs> this movie, why didn't we see more powers? <laughs> this movie kicks ass. Wait a minute, there's a guy inside of War Horse driving him. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. You've shown me love for the first time, too. Bang, 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 bang. Take that, Hitler. <laughs> now you gotta go hey, fight that kaiju, that way, War Horse. I hesitate to ask, but does that help? Yes. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We can bring the house lights down. Okay. They're still here. Please bring down those lights. Please, I'm getting so I'm nervous. So Make it go away, please. It's just me and my brother. Oh, Hi. Stop waving. Brigadoon. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for our podcast. Um, I, I promise you that we will not wait 10 years to come to Philadelphia again. You've been so fun. Thank you. Thank you to uh, Verizon Hall on the, uh, the Kimmel Center Cultural Campus where this show was recorded uh, for having us. It's a beautiful venue. I cannot believe we were allowed to play here. Thank you very right. much. Uh, also, thank you to Carrie Peach who designed the poster. For oh my show. God, this poster is so good. Um, uh, thank you to you all. Thank you to Sawbones for opening. Yes. Thank you to uh, Amanda and thank you to our father and thank you to Paul for, uh, yes. for all of the work you all do. And thanks oh, to... Oh, and, and thank you to Sam. Sam ha- helps arrange the shows. Yes. We wouldn't be able to do these without Sam. And thank, thank you, you to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use for a theme song. It's at a bar drop the album putting the bass to bed. 
Uh, we have to uh, head up to New York tomorrow to do uh, an unfathomable number of shows up there. Uh, so we're not going to be hanging out after the show. But I will say this. I don't have anything to say about that. But we really do appreciate you. And I promise we, we won't wait very long to come back here. And we're sorry that we did in the first place. And you all are amazing. Now, every week, my brother, my brother, me, Griffin, uh, reads a Yahoo that we talk about when we're off the air, and then we come back the next week and try to answer it. Uh, Griffin, have you prepared a final? Really think about this one. Okay. It was sent in by Bronson. Thank you to Bronson. It's, uh, again, it's not going to load, so I'm going to say it was asked by Johnson, who asks. <laughs> and really think about it. If you have a tattoo and you make a clone of yourself, would the clone also have the tattoo? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> My name is Justin McElroy. I, I am Travis McElroy? I'm Griffin McElroy. This is my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips! <laughs> MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.